that the Holy Spirit brings in our life is so marvelous and so wonderful that even the angels, they were searching and wanting to find out who are the people that will have the climax and the greatest of the work of the Spirit. Now, that work of the Spirit, let me show you what it did at that time, what he does at this time in the present work of the Spirit of Christ. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. And the Lord said, my spirit, the Lord said, the Lord, the God of heaven, my spirit, who is that? The spirit of God, the spirit of the Lord. It says, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years in the time of Noah. The world was corrupt. And the Holy Spirit was the one convicting men. This is evil. It, at that time, the world was dirty, defiled, sinful. They transgressed the law of God. And as the Spirit of God that was striving with them, convicting them, reminding them, troubling their heart, telling them this is the way of evil, that the work of the Spirit of God. He strives with men. He pleads with men. He says, this action is evil. This language is evil. This behavior is evil. And this thing that you are doing, transgressing, let nothing affect my prayer today. I want somebody to open his mouth and begin to pray. Okay. Almighty Father, I want to thank you. Let them hear your voice. Bless you. Okay. I want to worship your name, Father, because you are a good God. You are a great Father, I want to thank you because of what you have prepared to do in my life today. Father, I want to thank you because of the manifestation of your power upon my life today. I want to thank you, Father, because every dry bone, O oh God, we receive life. I want to thank you because the power of the Lord is going to locate me today. I want to thank you, Father, because the same for my poor who is going to touch my life today. I want to thank you, Father, because the mightiness of Jehovah is going to come upon me tonight. I want to thank you, Father, because of the dynamo from my poor is going to come upon my life today. I want to thank you, Father, because the strength of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, the finger of God is going to visit my life today. I want to thank you, Father, because, oh God, a new thing will start in my life, a new era in my life, a new thing in my life, a new power in my life, a new fire in my life, a new authority in my life, a new victory in my life, a new power in my life. Oh Lord, I want to thank you because of the great and the you are going to do. Holy Father, I praise you. Holy Father, I exalt you. Holy Father, I worship you. Because today, 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 today is not last week. Oh God, you are going to do wonderful thing in my life today. You are going to do marvelous thing in my life today. You are going to start with me afresh today. You are going to empower me today. You are going to feel me today. Amen. Therefore, Father, we come together in unity. We come with one voice. We come, Lord, with full enthusiasm, with full belief, with full faith within all that you have our prayer today. Lord God, I pray. Answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. As we begin now, let the host of heaven be deployed and answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Let there be no obstruction. Let there be no distraction in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. I want to ask you one question. Can this boy live? 
I don't know what you have been going through. The question is that can God answer that prayer today? Yes. The dry bone we are talking about is an hopeless state. A state where you say, oh, Lord, don't ask me this one now. We all know that this one is not possible. Lazarus was dead four days. Matter, can this bone live, live again? Yes, I know it can live, but on the resurrection. But I want to tell you that there is no boss in your matter today. Yeah. Because the, 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 the Almighty Himself that has power over nature, that has power over anything you can talk about. He called out Lazarus that was dead for day, four days, and Lazarus came forth. And I tell you, is there anything I had forgot to do? That thing you have been asking God to do. You know, you try it this way, no way. You try it that way, no way. And things have been very, very hard. I have prayed, I have fasted. You know, I used to like the case of Anna. Because the case of Anna is just like what is applicable to everyone. I go to Shiloh, each season I go to Shiloh, each season I go to Shiloh. I will tell Eli, pray for me now, help me now, look at what I'm going through. Eli was even discerning. But this very day was the appointed time. May I ask you one thing? What is your, when is your appointed time? If you know it is today, shout it out today! Today! It shall be to you according to your profession in the name of Jesus! Amen! We want to pray now, we want to go before the Lord. And we want to tell the Lord, Lord, I have come today. Today you will answer me in the name of Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and pray. This this moment, you will answer me. Today, you will answer me. I will not let you go my own. Today, you will do my own. Today you will do my own. Today you will do my own. You will do my own today. 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 In the name of Jesus, you will not pass me by. 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 Father, 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 you will not pass me by. Today is today. Today is today. Today is today. You will not pass me by. 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 Oh God, do not pass me by today. 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 Do not pass. Me by today, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, my Father, don't pass me by, don't pass me by today, 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 oh Lord, you will not pass me by. 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 You will not pass me by today. 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 My father, my father, do not pass me by today. I tell you that your story can go today. Uh, you cannot be in the presence of God and you are on mute. And then you meet yourself that God don't hear me or they hear me from within. My story must change today. That is why we have come together to bind our hearts together. To confess together in unity. Today. Oh God, my story must change today. In the name of Jesus. 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 Who got in my story? Who got in my story? Who got in my story? Today, today. In my story today. In my story today. In my story. Amen. 
for every amen I hear in my head. I prophesy to your situation that before the end of this year, starting from this season, may your miracle begin to unravel to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 2. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, in the open valley, very many bones, and lo, they were very dry. They are not fresh bones, they are bones that were dry. Then you look at it. Which one are we talking about today? We are talking about miracle. We are talking about God giving you your contract. We are talking about uh, uh, God relocating you to that place he has promised you. We are talking about God bringing that vision to realization. We are talking about God bringing that prophecy to realization. We are talking about God bringing that, 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 that vision to pass in your life. Uh, uh, somebody said over 20 years now God told me he was going to do this. And do you know that I've been praying up till now he has not given me the old they were very dry. <laughs> I need somebody to pray and tell the Lord, everything that is dry in my life, I command revival, the midst of revival, to fall upon it now. In the name of Jesus, Everything about me, about my family, about my wife, about my family, let the wind of revival fall. Oh God, oh God, let the wind of revival fall. In the name of Jesus, who revives, who God revives, who God revives, who God revives, who God revives, revive me, 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 in the name of Jesus, who the Father I pray, revive me. Revive Oh, 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 oh,
Je suis un peu de la Je Je suis un peu de I need somebody to shout it with a loud voice three times. I believe. You want to go? I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I I and again, he said unto me, Prophesy upon this bone, and say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Some of us will just be, will, will, will just be discussing, and I know that it will be done. And I know that God will bring this thing to pass. You don't know that that authority is in your mouth. You don't know that that power is already in your mouth. Some of you, what it takes you to defeat the devil is the power that is in your mouth. You don't even need to go on physical. You don't even need to brag here and brag there. All you need to destroy the devil is in that tongue. Just say it. Satan, get you behind me. And that is all. Satan, I defeat you today. And that is all. What I want you to do for me this time, what I want you to say this time is to begin to prophesy to yourself. Prophesy to your marriage. That marriage will not collapse. That marriage will be binded together in love. So, it's a to your family. My family will not fall apart. The children are doing their own. The father are doing their own. The men are doing their own. No. My family will not fall apart. My business will not fall apart. Then look at what is trending now. Spirit of grey water coming upon our children. And you look at this one, different behavior. You look at this one, different behavior. And not your dear, not like this. When I was young, your mother was not like this. When she was young, how come you get this thing? Somebody that understands prophecy begin to prophesy into the life of your children. Begin to prophesy into your marriage. Prophesy into your children. Open your mouth and declare it. Say it. The devil is in trouble. I will not die like this. I shall not die like this. You want to put me to shame? You want to put me to shame? I will never be ashamed. You that Jesus will never be ashamed. I will never be ashamed. You want to drive my name to the mouth. The place is free to give me time to God. It is this way. It is that way. You cannot drive my name in the mouth because the name of Jesus was not dragged me in the mouth. If you believe it, I pray in the name of Jesus. 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 I am a 
every heart miracle, spirit of almost there but never there, in the name of Jesus, I command you to perish in my life. Open your mouth and pray that prayer.
by the grace of the Lord, I need that we are before the altar. Because to this prayer, I know by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, for everyone who are under it, you will not go empty handed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our mighty Father, we come before you. Lean down, lean down. Whatever God told you to do, just do it. Not because of your servant that is here, but because you are looking at Almighty God, and like His Son is looking at His Father. Mm-hmm. Collect one thing, or the daughter is looking at his mother to collect one thing. And then uh, I was touched, and I will tell you the many reasons I was touched during my prayer. Dear Father, we come before you this morning, afternoon, probably in Nigeria. There was a time then the God needs to prove himself before human beings. The prophet of the bar, they gather together. And then in multiple, in, 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 in hundreds, and they started calling, saying on their God, that their God, this is what we want you to do. We want light, we want fire to come out of this, uh, what we can call offering. Then, they talk, talk, talk. This, this week, they say a lot of things, be believing that the fire will come out of that uh, offering that was prepared. But nothing but shame came out of it. Their father, it came to the time of Elijah. He even said, this is what I want. Put water around this offering. Every one of us know water and fire, they are not friends. To the extent that, okay, if you put water, you will believe, you will see that the miracle that's going to happen, that out of that water, fire will even come out. So, this is what I'm bringing on to you. All of us have come today. Elijah come. What will debar us from our prayer being answered? What we let people say, look at these people, they are speaking, mm-hmm. they are talking, they are praying like Baal prophet, and nothing come out of it. This is the reason why I come before you, O oh Lord. For the unbeliever, I was in the confession, and a, a woman was sharing the testimony unto me that he late in getting, she was late in getting married. And it it comes to the extent that some of the women in the church, they were saying to her, why are you all these people are not getting married? Can't you see men in the church? Why? Because they, they got married before the, she got married again, then no children. Another one was, it was talking to her one day again. Why are you, are you not sleeping with your husband? Why are you not getting, getting child? That long run, I remember I saw the child in the confession. It was one of the of the children, I mean the the young adult that was blowing trumpets for the church. Then uh I was speaking to one pastor. I know his life. I know what is that and we are talking about rapture. And he told me boldly and I saw the faith in him. He said, Pastor Matthew, forget it. When Christ comes now, I'm going. I'm going to be raptured. I know some of his life. I was doubting, but the kind of the faith he used to speak, I saw the faith in him, and I see through faith, there's nothing God cannot do. But okay. dear Father, we come with all faith, with belief. Our people are, are we are poured down our heart on you. But whatsoever that we read the cause. That we not let our prayer of this morning be answered. That we not let us have testimony by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. King of kings, take it away in Jesus' name. Amen. My language, and they will call some people. Pastor, we allow we uh, 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 allow we are uh, Father, we have come today by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. We pray in spirit. Many physically, I pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, spiritually, 
we are going to wipe out all the tears in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, if you have not done it, I wouldn't have believed you can do it. Mm-hmm. And then your servant is a good example. I remember we went to a night Fiji. And we were praying. We were praying. We pray seriously. Many of us, you have no how God has brought your father, your servant out of very hardship. And I got home. Your father got home. Your servant got home on that day. And as I was sleeping, I saw the pastor of that particular night Fiji. And he came back to me. On that dream, all the prayer that was prayed in that play that day, and he started saying everything together, everything, and he said it. I said, yes, God has answered your prayer. And this is the testimony I have, that there is nothing you cannot do. Mm-hmm. You can see the heart of your people. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus, the labor of your pastor mm-hmm. upon them. Pastor, therefore, and all other pastors, by the power and the blood of God, will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Amen. I know nothing of this servant of God, not because they depend upon any other thing, they depend upon you. And it's as a result of it, they told them, Come, the dry bone will surely rise again. I pray by Amen. the power Amen. and the blood, all the bone that have died in the life of mm. every one of us, physically, mm. materially, mm. Uh, uh, spiritually, in all areas of our lives. And we are thinking, there's no hope. Or we are thinking, why me? Or we are thinking, how can I move forward? I pray because of today, you are the one that created today and can never be another day like this. You are blessed like this morning. I pray by the power and the blood of every one of us we have testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, how do you want them to prove if they are asking them where is their God? I totally believe we cannot use your word to capture you or to or to what the man said, God is what I'm telling you. Either you change my my life, it doesn't take anything from your name. Either you don't change it, it doesn't change anything from your name. But you better change it for betterment so that I can able to share testimony of your name. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, your name will be glorified in the life of every one of us that under this prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the pastor said, in the recent confession, go in this their might. I put every one of us that under the administration of today, the mighty one, the mighty power, the glorious that the power I put in our life, in everything we presented. I pray as we are going, we are going in that might in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Including on your children, on your wife. Amen. On your on your husband, on everything that belongs to you, whatever any one of us, I think we are not more than fifteen now. Whatever and look at the billions of people in the world. Whatever we lay our hand upon by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we are going to succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It doesn't cost you. Whatever you are going to use for that particular person, you are the only one that knows. Your servant yes. see another a very good example. I pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray once again, whatsoever any one of us lay our hand upon by the power in the blood of Jesus shall be sorted in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are buried the past. We are seeing the future. And the future belongs unto you because mm-hmm. you are the bread and life of this world. I pray by the power and the blood, whosoever see us, you are going to see your glory in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 My dear sister, my dear mother, my dear father, I want you to know it's not by power or by any other thing 
It is by the glory of Almighty God. So do not doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. How God is going to do it, you don't know. But I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus, those people who does not know you, they will look for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. From henceforth, from this hour, from this minute, there is nothing impossible for God. That's what the Bible says. You will be a dominion over money in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. From this moment, as far as you have believed, as far as you believe there's nothing God cannot do, from this moment from you to your generation, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, what will bow down for you in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. And the glory of the Lord, wherever you enter, we explode for the glorification of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So shall it be. In Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor, that will offer to you, and then we can share the testimony whatsoever you want. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our dear Father, we thank you for this moment. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you because your people gathered before you, they have faith in you that you can never disappoint them. My mm -hmm. Lord and my Father, I pray, every yoke that is still remaining anywhere, we command it to break in the name of Jesus. Amen. And everybody that the devil is forcing on anybody's neck. We cut it off right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We come against every violent spirit, every stubborn spirit that wants to mock the glory of God's people. We destroy them by the authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, give us power to dominate our enemy. Make us hey, in, the of our enemy in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, amen. We command sickness to disappear. Amen. amen. We command incurable diseases to disappear. Amen. amen. That is called impossible. Oh, yeah, become possible now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give everyone their needed miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. By this time next week, as we come together, put laughter in everybody's face. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord bless Amen. you. The Lord bless Amen. you to shine over you and give Amen. you Amen. Thank you, Amen. Father. Amen. In Thank Jesus' you. name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace together. We we'll meet you tomorrow on the Garden of the Ego. God will help us in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, with us now and for our mom. Amen. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. You are going with testimony in Jesus' name. And you shall come back Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not the positive. The glory of the Lord will shine in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, man. Thank you, our Father. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm.
In Jesus' name we pray. Everlasting Father, we know you are, you are interested in our lives. Hence, you have called us out of the wilderness of this world into the marvelous light of the gospel of the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we come before the throne of grace this morning. We pray, Lord, our worship of today will be acceptable unto you in Jesus' name. Lord, at the end of the service this morning, we pray that every one of us will go back home rejoicing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the answer. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We remain standing as we sing from our God to hymns and songs, number one. Gospel hymns and songs, number one. All your anxiety. Is there a heart or bound by sorrow? Is there a life weighed down by care? Come to the cross, each body bearing. All your anxiety, leave it there. No other friend so keen to help you. No other friend so quick to hear. No other place to leave your body. No other one to hear your prayer. Come then at once, delay no longer. Hear this entreaty, kind and sweet. You need not fear a disappointment. You shall find peace at the mercy seat. All your anxiety, all your care, bring to the mercy seat, leave it there. Never a burden you cannot bear. Never a friend like Jesus.
Father, we thank you for bringing us to this holy sanctuary once again. We ask that your glory will cover this place and we find grace to help today at the hour of need in Jesus' name. We ask that your word will bless our lives and give us all the instructions we need to run the race until we get to heaven to see you face to face in Jesus' name. We thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Now welcome to the Sadi Scripture class this morning. Today we have a new study before us, study number 892, titled Warning Against Worldliness and Pride. Can we say that please? A memory verse taken from James chapter 4, verse 4. Can somebody who has committed it to memory? There's a sister there. The 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Thank you. Can you read that text for us? James chapter 4, verse 1 to 17. From where come the war and fightings among you? Come they not end, even of your lust, that war in your members. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask and miss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he says, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hearts, ye sinners. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judges the law. And, but if thou judge the law, thou hast not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judges another? Go to now ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye not know ye know not what ye shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Thank you very much. The epistle of James was written by James, a lost half-brother, who was a highly respected elder in a church at Jerusalem. It was written as a divine counsel to Jewish believers scattered on the face of the earth and living in various countries. He called them brethren. And um, that word brethren occurred 15 times in a short uh, epistle of five chapters which means the epistle was written to brethren believers in Christ. Um, if you run through the book of epistle for the benefit of those of us who have not followed the study till now, you see the word brethren occurring from time to time. James chapter 1 verse 2 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Each time he uses the word brethren, it brings a very important uh, lesson that is indispensable in our journey to heaven. In one, chapter 1, verse 19, it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. And then chapter 2, verse 1, My brethren, 
have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ with respect of persons. In chapter 2, verse 14, what does it profit, my brethren? Do a man say he has faith and have no works? Can faith save him? And then in chapter 3, verse 1, it says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that ye shall receive the greater damnation. And then in our passage, in our text today, in chapter 4, verse 11, it says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law and judge the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law. And in chapter 5 and in verse 7, chapter 5 and verse 7, it says there, Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he received the earthly, the early and latter rain. So he's talking to brethren here. And um, in uh, the passage we read today, it traces the cause of strife among brethren to lust. Before now, he had addressed the problem of impatience, indiscretion, double-mindedness in prayer, pride, ignorance of the source of our temptations, intemperate speech, neglect of pure religion, partiality, impotence of faith without works, destructive power of the tongue. And now it traces the cause of strife among brethren to loss, which is the proof of inherent Adamic nature. The unsanctified heart is a fertile ground for inordinate affection and the consequent inner strife or turmoil that has spiral effect on relationship and fellowship with others. Added to lust is worldliness and pride. Apostle James highlights these problems and their negative implications on the believer's relationship with God and other believers and the scriptural solutions to them. So we look at three points quickly. Number one, the cause and effects of loss among the brethren. Secondly, caution against worldliness and pride. Then the third point, condemnation for presumption and boasting. Let's go to point number one, the cause and effect of loss among the brethren. James chapter 4 verse 1. From whence come wars and fight is among you? Come they not hence even of your loss, the war in your members? Ye lost and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask and miss that ye may consume it upon your loss. In verse 1, Apostle James opens with a question. From whence come wars and fights among you? Or in other words, where do the conflicts and quarrels among you come from? Come not they, even of your loss, that war in your members. Now, when he talk about your members, it means your body, your heart. And that's why we need to take note of where loss originates from. The apostle attributes the wars and fights among brethren to loss. And loss is an overwhelming, consuming, or intense desire or craving for something. When you are desperate for something, that the devil comes in. It comes, it could be fleshly gratification, power, position, or material possession. The unconverted heart is a reservoir for all sorts of evil things. And where the believer loses the sanctification experience, the root of sins begin to grow again, and the possibility is there for total backsliding. This underscores the need to be concerned about the state of our hearts. If you come to Mark chapter 7, verse 21 to 22, it says, from, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, and all these evil things come from within and defy the man. And when you, the word from within is used, it means from the heart. These laws actually declare war. The laws that come from your heart, they declare war against yourself. They declare war not just against your body, your position, or your possession, but against your very soul. If you come to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 11, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 
verse 11. Saturday chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly loss which war against your soul. You want to ensure that your heart is kept for, free from loss. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. For out of it, that is, your heart is a well spring, the very source of life. Once the heart is defied, degenerated, deformed, degraded, the individual is destroyed. It's like a tree that is being gradually eaten by termites, and it is still standing. Any little wind will just blow it down. First question, let me come to the choir. Explain what loss means and its effect on the believer and the church. Somebody from the choir, please. Adult choir. Okay, somebody from here. Explain what loss means and its effect on the believer and the church. Loss is an overwhelming and powerful desire for something that is contrary to the will of God. Thanks very much. Loss does not bring peace, but in our war and tumult. If you read Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17, Galatians chapter 5 verse 17, it says, for, for the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. And when we pray or fast with loss in our hearts, we get no answers from God. When we become saved from sin, we receive grace to deny all ungodliness and worldly loss and to live soberly and godly and righteously here in this present world. If you come to Titus chapter 2, verse 11, Titus chapter 2, verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. This implies that Jesus gave himself, his entire self, to us so that we can become purified from loss and all such things. And we also have a responsibility to keep our eyes away from evil. If you read First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, abstain from all appearance of evil. This implies that we should not intentionally gaze at, at attention on objects that inflame our minds with ungodly passions and vanities of life. We bring back the sin of loss again into our lives after we have been washed. If you read uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 says, Flee also youthful loss, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, even an apostle, you can be a worker, you can be a leader, says, and Paul himself said, I keep my body on, under, lest after I preach to others,